my computer. This is our advanced Toastmasters online meeting and today is January the 17th, 2018. And we are a part of a new and exciting advanced Toastmasters club where I'd like to start out with doing just a quick introductions we'll go through and I'll start and just say your name, where you're from. I know we already did this before, but just for anybody who pops in, we're gonna do our name, where you're from, and then back to you, Madam President. How's your sandwich? Good. Oh, <laughs> my sandwich is very good, thank you. And we'll start with you, Marty. <laughs> Hi, Marty Green, calling here from 2J's Restaurant, I'm actually Palm City, Florida. Back to you, Dawn, and Madam Toastmaster, and President. Thank you, Marty. Uh, next, Doug, can you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Doug Thiessen. I'm uh, from Cleveland, Ohio. This is my first time on an online Toastmaster meeting, so I'm looking forward to it. Back to you, Don, and Madam President. Thank you, Doug. And Jim. Hi, my name is Jim Adams. I'm coming to you from Nicholasville, Kentucky. Uh, back to you, Madam President. And Pamela. I'm Pamela Landers from the Palm Springs area in California. Back to you, Madam President. And I am your president coming in from Central Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, where it is still snowy. We have about six inches on the ground, I believe, in most parts, some places. It is three feet where I have shoveled. <laughs> <laughs> so. And today's meeting, I'm going to start by sharing a screen and just giving us a little bit of background about this Advanced Toastmasters Club and how do you join? How do we get a part of this? We are a, first of all, we're recording this meeting. So our policy is that all of the meetings will be recorded and we'll use excerpts from this meeting uh, videos for both our club members use and for using them for media outreach and social media and to kind of market the club so people will want to join. Um, if you have, if you want to make a request that we don't share your portion of the video, then you have to do that. Please do that beforehand or as soon as you think about it, we'll make sure that that happens. And the videos are used internally by our club members for education. Eventually, I'd like to have our videos shared just with and just for the members but right now as we're starting out we're going to share them far and wide unless we change our mind on that <laughs> um, online meeting tips use a headset or earbuds like i'm using and sometimes it's easier if you hold it right up to your mouth so we can hear you mute your mic when you're not speaking and that will be on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. And you can also toggle your video on and off, but we want to see you. So if you leave your seat, you wanna make sure that you turn your video off because it just, it's like leaving the stage. We don't wanna let, let the stage be left unattended. So how to become a member, attend at least three meetings as a guest or just join since we're starting the club right away. This is an advanced club, not for absolute beginners. And if you do not meet club membership requirements of a CC, uh, you can make a couple minute speech on table topics, during table topics to let us know how you can contribute to the club. Um, exceptions are subject to the vote or the board, which will be created once we charter. So with that, uh, and to join, just to let you know, if you go to the ato.toastmost.org, G. there is a link at the very top that says quick start and that will get you in there so you can see how to fill out an application how to make payment and anything else that you might want to know about joining the club and at this point I am going to start our meeting and we by introducing our timer of the day. Let us know what you're going to be doing as the timer, Pamela Landers. Hi, I'm Pamela Landers and I'm the timer today. 
I will be timing table topics, I will be timing speeches, and I will be timing evaluations. Evaluations are two to three minutes. You will see this color that is emanating green today at the beginning of your, whenever you hit your minimum mark, then you will have yellow, and then you will have red. You have 30 seconds to wrap up with red for all three of those options. And I need to know the times for the speeches because I don't have that. So Jim, Can you tell me. Yeah, Jim, go ahead and tell her your time for your speech. Sure. The, the speech that I'm doing out of the advanced manual is a 10 to 12 minute speech. 10 to 12, okay. And Mark is in here, so we don't and know. I do know his. his oh, is, Mark, uh, there he is. There he is. Oh, and his, yes. just in time, Mark, to share how long your speech is with our timer. Oops, we don't hear you. I know his speech is two to three minutes. Is that correct? Two to three or uh, three to four? Two to three? Oh. Uh, this is three to four. Oh, three to four. Thank you, Doug. Okay. <laughs> His evaluator. Great. Awesome. Hello. Thank you. Can you hear me? This is Mark. We can hear you, yes. We can't see you, though. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. We just. Oh, okay. oh uh, not very good. Yeah. I'm not sure. Sometimes this is this is what we're doing as an online club. We're testing things out, and I will. I know sometimes when I join via my phone, and use the app, the Zoom app, and just allow myself the bandwidth on my cell phone it works sometimes <laughs> so you might want to try that out and see if that works for you uh, and there's a possibility that you no, can. I understand now you're now you're clear but there's a slight delay there's a slight delay I just wanted to make you aware of that from my end and I don't want to delay the meeting either but at least we are connected. This is the reality of the online world that we have joined. And in many ways, I hear people using the term pioneer. So we, uh, for me, improvisation and synergy is so critical. We will make it happen. There's always a solution. We will make it happen. And you do sound very clear, so that's good. So thank you, Mark. And You're most welcome. Awesome. And I'm going to mute you just until we have you on as a speaker. Okay. And do I have a volunteer to do the grammarian and the ah counter? I can do that. I'm also, actually, I'll do it. I will do it. I will look for, as the grammarian, I will look for any uses of Ahs, so's, double clutches, double starts, use of the word of the day, which I haven't shared yet, but the word of the day will be appreciation because this is a club that's based on appreciating ourselves, appreciating each other, and appreciating what Toastmasters can bring to us as we are Maverick leaders on our way to making a bigger impact in the world. So I'm going, the word of the day is appreciation. I'll look for that and to hear who uses that in their speech or in their table topics or just as they are uh, being introduced. And as the, yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. <laughs> and I think collectively we can do a chat monitoring. Just look at the, for the chats, I'm going to give a little um, introduction to how to use that chat. There is a chat button at the very bottom of our Zoom meeting. You can click on that. Please do not click on the chat button to send somebody a message while somebody else is speaking. This is basic etiquette for speeches and for Toastmasters. We want to make sure that we honor and give the space and appreciation to the speaker. For the day so make sure that when you have something to say to somebody you can do the click on the chat you can also click on where it says everyone send a private message to one of the speakers when they're done speaking and i'll save some time in between speeches so we can do that 
And with that, I'm going to introduce our first speaker of the day. And this is Jim Adams. And he is speaking from an advanced manual, speak, speeches by, man, by management. This is the status report. His speech title is Paddle Like Hell. It's 10 to, 10 to 12 minutes. At this point, help me introduce or help me welcome Jim Adams with Paddle Like Hell. Jim Adams. Thank you, everybody. The purpose, and I want to create the venue, the scenario that you all are members of a club that I have created in my local community. This is not a fictional club. This is a real club, but for the benefit of your participation and appreciation of this speech, that's how I'd like for us to have this framed. The purpose of this report is to give you, the charter members, a real world uh, snapshot of what we've done in the year 2017 on this, what I consider a very uh, positive and exciting and successful group that we've created here. Uh, it's geared towards people that appreciate the efforts of the maintaining of a volunteer and a nonprofit organization. All of you being Toastmasters, I'm sure can appreciate that. Uh, we all appreciate the 90% of the iceberg that's below the surface, how the sausage is made, all of us being basically advanced members and have been participating in my, I guess would be that we've all been officers at one time or another in our clubs. Basically what's under the hood, uh, technically in our leadership efforts. And that reminds me of the quote that I heard about being like a duck, where we all remain calm on the surface, but we paddle like hell underneath. And this has basically been my passion for the last six months. So I want to share with you where we, where we have been and what the plan is moving forward for 2018. We've had a successful start to this particular club, this organization. Uh, it is geared towards things, I will keep it, I'm going to be intentionally coy about what this club is called and what it is about. But it is a group where we invite folks to help fight for human rights and against killer robot, robots. I'm basically one of the against the killer robots group uh, of the world, and that is a real thing. Lethal Autonomous Weapon Systems, otherwise known as LAWS, uh, just to name a few of the pet projects that I like to talk about when we have our meeting gatherings. So I wanna share with you that yes, a, a mini State of the Union, if you will, that the group is thriving. Uh, do changes need to be made? Yes. Do we know what changes need to be made? Not necessarily. So what I wanna do is share with you where we've been so you have a, a better understanding of what we're going to be doing moving forward. The status report. The status report basically is just a couple of quick shots of where we've been and how we are progressing so we can then take that as our baseline. We started out in this club back in February of 2018 with a, an initial email to the person that had created this original club out of New York City. Uh, once we had had our conference call and coordinated the, the rules and regs and if, everything along the lines of trademarks and branding, very similar to Toastmasters, we were able to have our kickoff meeting in July. Since then, we've had monthly gatherings. I've shown basically in this particular column the Facebook people that say they're going, the Facebook people that are interested, and then the actual attendance. So you can see that we've got a pretty healthy group of say 17 to 23 people with a lot of interest showing up depending on the particular posts and things that we share on the Facebook page, which currently has been our primary focus as far as what we are doing to get out the information to the community. The main thing that has allowed us to evolve into something that has structure because it's a very informal structured group. We are only tacitly connected with the, the mothership, if you will, is to get the feedback from the various folks in the meetings. What I chose to do, something that I learned about a long time ago, was a thing called an idea rating sheet. An idea rating sheet is a great tool. It's a participative thing that you can do at the meetings, which occur at restaurants and other venues, where you can ask certain questions, put them in here, and it basically goes from a strong agreement, smiley face, to a strong disagreement, frowny face, a place on the far right-hand side for you to write your signature or just your initials because the sheets I've made half size, and then people can share their ideas. 
I, I share the very same little clipboards every single time we meet. And it's something that if you're a new person, you have something to, to do with your hands. It also encourages all sorts of feedback and the sense of belonging, which is really what I'm going for when we have our meetings. Some of the things that I've done in the past is at our next meeting, should we have trivia of some sort? Or at the next meeting, should we meet somewhere else? And our, our meeting should have some sort of agenda or maybe a group toast. And at the meeting, what, what should we discuss? So these types of things have been great tools because there's not really a structure per se. No one's expecting someone, for example, myself, to just run a, a meeting and everyone sit in attendance. This is something that I really want to have as, a, as an organic type of, uh, of a meeting venue. So what we've done is because of all of that information and all of those that feedback from the idea rating sheets, we have created an agenda. We have toasts at the beginning of our, of our, of our gatherings. We have raffles and door prizes, bumper stickers, magnets, and pins. We've got themed presentations, which is still in its infancy. And the idea rating sheet really is the, the meat and potatoes at, for this first 2017 about how we're going to be evolving our particular, uh, particular group. Also, we've had people donate to us uh, things like donated artwork by Shepard Ferry, poster prints that we were able to give away or raffle off and things like comedy off Broadway tickets. So things that kind of are exciting for everyone to kind of do the drum roll and see what they see, what, see if they might be winning. So that's, that's basically the, so far what we've done to date. Now, are there obstacles moving forward? I would say, yes, there are. There's, there's a lot of obstacles. And the two obstacles that I know that we've got are that we have a demographic issue. The demographic issue, oddly enough, the demographics that we've got for this particular club, if you look at Facebook, is 75% women and 25% men. And the attendance, it's 90% women and 10% men. So when I post this on Facebook saying, come on, guys, what's going on? All of my buddies will say, well, I don't see what you're complaining about. You've got, you're surrounded by 90% women. This is fantastic. But that's not the point. That's not the point of the, of the organization. So that's one of the things that I do want to focus on in the year 2018. And the other one, which has demonstrated itself as an issue, is the venue. This is not a group that is situated in a closed room all the time, like a Toastmaster group might have a, a church setting or a cafeteria setting or a restaurant setting. But how do you convey a an exciting and dynamic meeting where you've got toasts and you've got door prizes when you're interspersed with mixed company in say a restaurant or a bar where there are total strangers sitting right next to you. It doesn't work very well. So the agenda, which came out of the use of the idea writing sheets, basically is something now that I've learned over time is going to be a table agenda. What I found myself doing with a group of 10 or 15 different people and maybe four or five different tables is going around every single table and trying to facilitate little mini meetings because no one could hear everybody. That's a challenge. So what I've ended up doing at the, uh, as a suggestion from one of the people is create table chairs. I know that sounds kind of funny, but someone, a table captain, if you will, someone that would basically take that one agenda and use that one agenda at that particular table. So that way there can be an overall, hello, everybody, welcome to the meeting. But then they've got something that as their little microcosm of the group can facilitate what they're talking about and follow through with very simple things like a toast at the beginning, a toast in the middle of the meeting a toast at the end of the meeting. And then of course we would all convene and have a presentation of sorts that still is a little bit of a problem, which is why this is what I wanna focus on moving forward in 2018. How do we deal with the various locations and venues and have something that works not only if you were on a monolithic setting of a single table with everybody around it, or if you've got 25 or 30 people where that's just not doable because of the number of people that are in group you might also be in mixed company. So those are the two problems that we need to overcome in the year 2018. So how do we resolve those? My recommendations basically for the location issue is to make the entire process 
irrelevant as far as if you're at single tables and round tables. That's where having a table captain and describing that these, these agendas are on a table by table basis or can be in a total group. That will, moving forward, uh, make us agile, nimble, uh, adaptable to whatever the environment is, which is great because we like to be a roving club. We like to go from place to place. We don't have the luxury of paying $250 for a room uh, because we have no money at this point. Uh, speaking of money, I have donated uh, to the cause through boast, Boosted Post on Facebook about $196 for the over the course of six months, kind of seed money to get the information out there. And that really has helped out significantly as far as what, we, what we've what we been able to do as far as membership. If you'll notice from the beginning and in the inception of our group to today, we have 253 followers, which is great because a lot of them like to share. And again, uh, the other issue, which you can see here, the demographic is 72% uh, women and 27% men. Again, a problem as far as I'm concerned, we need to have more diversity. So as far as the issue with the location, I think we'll be able to address that by having table captains, if you will, and describing how the use of the agenda, if we are in that type of environment, can be used. That will be super helpful. We'll still have communal parts of it, but at least this way, if you're in a loud and noisy environment, everybody can still be doing something at their individual tables. As far as the demographics issue, I really want to call my next phase of this the co-project, the CO portion, where I want to co-promote, say, the venues that we are sitting at, co-promote different groups that have the same like-minded philosophies and ideas that we have, and also co-promote uh, some of the speakers that might be speaking with us. So by doing that, we build an audience, and hopefully the, the makeup of that group will balance out in the end. So my philosophy and approach will be the co phase of this. So I saved it until last and that was intentional because too many times in this very divisive political environment, trigger words tend to turn people off at the onset of any conversation. The group that I'm talking about was incepted back 14 years ago in New York City by a girl, uh, a woman, and some of her friends in the backyard of a West Side Manhattan bar and they coined it drinking liberally. So what we do as one of the 240 some chapters there are around the United States is we get together and we embrace the education, the fight for the fifth estate, the fight against things that uh, what I consider propaganda and the education of things that I find dear to my heart, which is fighting off killer robots and anything else that say like-minded individuals might want to share. So I'd just like to close and say we've got Good year. I plan on having a fantastic year in 2018, and I look forward to sharing with you the results of that the next time that we get together. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Jim Adams. Thank you very much for that speech, that very informative speech. And next on our agenda, I would like to introduce Mark Worthy. And he is our second speaker tonight, and he's an online member from Central Mexico. Mark is an advocate for student success and achievement. Through his efforts, he has helped his students secure admissions into schools such as Harvard School of Business, Duke, Bryn Mawr, the University of Pennsylvania, just to name a few. His belief, his belief clarifies Oh, his beneficiaries <laughs> have secured employment with Google, Goldman Sachs, WTOP Washington, NPR, and the U.S. State Department. Mark converted his vocation into a business as a solopreneur, business coach, and pathways enthusiast. Today, he will share his strategy for success through effective use of resources. Mark has chosen Pathways Presentation Mastery Level 3 building skills, deliver social speeches. This is a project in which two speeches are delivered twice in order to help the speaker improve and refine the delivery. Would you please help me welcome Mark Worthy as he delivers speech 1A, valuable resource, and speech 2, getting results. He's actually only speaking on the getting the results portion of this speech today. Is that correct, Mark? 
Oops, I'm, let me unmute you. <clears throat> yes, actually, okay. I'm delivering the two speeches. Each is three to four minutes. I communicated with Pamela okay. about how she chooses to time me. So I have two speeches. One is pertaining to the resource, and the second is getting results. Okay, I, that was my misunderstanding, but thank you very much for clarifying that. So I didn't didn't get the information about the timing. So you want each one timed at three, three and a half and four, and then you're gonna start another one at three, three and a half and four? That works well, Pamela. Okay, I'll do that. So uh, once again, help me welcome Mark Worthy as he delivers could speech I, one. Sorry, could I interject for a moment? As the evaluator, I'm evaluating two speeches here. In principle, yes. Okay. Two, two no. short speeches. Not a traditional five to seven minute speech. Each speech is three to four minutes. So that the onus is upon me to manage my time effectively. And it's one, okay. one speech evaluation, Doug. Yes. One, one evaluation. It's a pathways thing. Um, okay, because I noticed that there seems to be a first speech and a second speech in the evaluation uh, form that you sent me. Okay, well, so, can maybe we... So you should be evaluating using the second speech. I delivered the first phase at Emperor's two weeks ago. Okay, so and I will I'm, fill in the I'm, second speech as exactly. both of them collectively. Okay. That is correct. Thank and you. then I that will take that case. feedback and update my pathways system to reflect that I've done both and how I have grown between the two speeches. In an ideal world, I hope to realize greater improvement as a result of delivering for the second time and having benefit of your evaluation. Of course. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Okay, speech number one, a valuable resource, a valuable resource for Mark, speech number one. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters. If it were not for Julie Cortez, I would not be with you at this time. I believe that is extremely important as you navigate in the pathways or as a traditional Toastmaster to have a mentor, to have a coach. In my case, having a coach is extremely important. I have secured my DTM in 2015. And at a certain point, I said, what else is there to do? I was about to leave. Julie convinced me that I should proceed with Pathway. And in the process, I was exposed to another level of what it is to be a Toastmaster, and I am indebted to her. As such, I would like to pay tribute and emphasize what she delivered in terms of her purpose, her patience, and the pleasant manner in which she conducted herself and engaged me. Again, what was very important is that together as new Pathways participant and coach, Julie has been an ambassador and a Pathways guide. She has this wealth of knowledge that she graciously shared with me. I found Pathways in the beginning quite frustrating. The launches have occurred in many districts and as pioneers, you should be prepared to encounter areas of misclarity, vagueness. That could be extremely frustrating. And through Julie, she would help me move through this process of understanding what it is, understanding how to use it at an optimal level, and also to be able to gained from the experience because along the way I was a bit resistant. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know how I would handle this, but she kept me motivated. This takes me to her manner. She was extremely pleasant. 
She was engaging. Despite my frustration, she always understood. She always gave me the support that I needed as a Toastmaster to proceed in this minefield that we call Pathways. There are many challenges to Pathways, and there are so many growth opportunities that I find that when those of you who have not joined the journey do so, you will be in a position to take advantage of it. Because you see, I've grown through Julie's pleasant, engaging manner. It's important to understand that critically, when you engage someone, always determine what that purpose is. Always make sure you're on the same page. As a coach, mentee, as a mentor, mentee, it is extremely important to establish patience within the context of what you are delivering. I've been able to learn that from Julie. I could use extensive words and be verbose, but for me right now, in the final analysis, the two most important words that I can extend to her are thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for that speech. And now your second speech, Mark's second portion of the speech is getting results, a valuable resource, getting results. Please help me once again. Welcome, Mark Worthy. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters. As fate would have it, I was at a client site this morning and we were discussing the need for professional presentation techniques and I exposed them to GTD, David Allen, getting things done. It's extremely important in this phase of our lives in which we are overextended in many cases to understand the benefits and the significance of organizing ourselves. And I thank David Allen for what he has written, especially as it applies to the workplace. We tend to forget that in the workplace, there are social elements. 80% of what we do in the workplace is rooted in human relations, social relations. I find it extremely important for us to understand the dynamic of engagement, especially as it applies to another phase that we don't discuss very much within Toastmasters and that's leadership. I would like to discuss leadership styles and how they are applicable for us, not only as Toastmasters, but people who remain in the workforce, people who are engaged in other types of social organizations, because leadership is so critical for us. Now, first and foremost, there are different types. I want to talk to you about six. The first is coercive. Coercive leadership suggests that you do as I say. I am not interested in your opinions. That is a unique style, but it's not always appropriate. Second style, authoritative. Now, authoritative provides a goal. The authoritative leadership style indicates what needs to be achieved and it is incumbent upon the team member to adhere and to bring to fruition. And affiliative is team-based. We have a group of individuals who are working collectively to achieve a common goal. Thereafter, is democratic. And by democratic, everyone has a voice. Everyone should feel free to offer his or her opinion about the task at hand. From there, we segue into the pace setter. Doug comes in. 
He has an agenda. He has a goal. He sets the pace. He sets the standard. And it is upon us to align and work toward achieving Doug's goal. Then we have the coaching approach. Pamela wants to make sure that she helps her employees, her members of her group, achieve that collective goal. She will make sure that they grow, they develop, they improve, and they re realize their aspirations. It is important to understand David Allen, GTD, get things done. It is important to understand the six leadership styles, coercive, authoritative, affiliative. By doing so, you have an understanding of what can be done, how to do them, and you can release the leader within. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much. At this point, we are going to, I'm going to just take a second, maybe uh, 30 seconds, to allow all of us to send private messages to both of our speakers, if you haven't already, <laughs> and just give some feedback to them personally. And we'll also do that at the, during the evaluation portion, if we have time. So. 30 seconds. Okay, and at this time, I'm going to hand the meeting over to our timer report. Report. I need to do a timers report. Timers report. Yes, please give us a timers report, Pamela. Okay. Uh, Jim was 12 minutes and 39 seconds, so he was nine seconds over his extra 30. Mark's first speech was three minutes and 58 seconds, so he qualified, and the second speech was four minutes and 16 seconds, so he qualified. Awesome, thank you, thank you. And our general evaluator is Pamela Landers, uh, but we're not going to into our evaluation portion at this time. We are actually going to go straight into our table topics. Our topic master for tonight is Marty Green, and he's going to lead us in that portion of our meeting. So Marty Green, can you please tell us what you're going to be doing and get started with the table topics? Sure. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. So table topics, the intention of table topics, as we all know, is to learn how to speak extemporaneously or off, off the cuff when you don't know what the question is going to be. So today we're going to actually do three table topics for the time. And the first is going to be for Doug. Doug, the drone photography business is booming and you wanna be part of it. You're interviewing for a position as a drone photographer. Sell me on a place anywhere in the world you would film that would gain a million viewers on YouTube, qualify you for the job and the company for a million dollar prize. Doug? Thank you, Marty, for the opportunity to present my idea for drone photography. Now, I think a remarkable place to get some incredible footage would actually be the mysterious military base of Area 51. If I can get a drone up above Area 51 and do some covert surveillance of what's actually going on there, the amount of viewing potential for that would be sky high, higher than the drone. Because there's so many people curious about what is going on, what did they ever discover? 
Is there actually any alien activity at Area 40, 51? But of course, there's a challenge, and it's a highly top secret space. So even getting a drone near that space is going to be a real difficulty. But I think that if I make a drone and paint it completely blue just to match the sky, it could be camouflaged and they wouldn't even notice it. Then I could fly in, get some footage, and then when it gets released to YouTube, the, sky, the viewing rate will just be enormous. There'll be such potential to expose what's really going on in this mysterious, secretive, and highly unusual military base. And we get to see, exposed for the public, what these aliens really look like. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Okay, the second question is for Jim. Jim, if food could be delivered by a drone to your picnic, where in the world would you host that picnic? What would you serve and who would attend? Jim? <laughs> Thank you very much. Just visualizing that a picnic basket would be served from a drone while we waited somewhere on this planet is such an interesting concept. I think personally, I like places like Hawaii. I like forested areas, which would be a bit of a challenge. And I think that might be one of the things that would make it an interesting delivery. If you are in a place that might be a little more challenging for a drone, I, I empathize with the drone operator, uh, but I think I would I, just to make sure that they're worth their weight in drone, that I would probably pick something that would be a challenge, not only a, a nice meal for the picnic that we're having, but to amaze, to everyone's amazement, have this flying copter with a picnic basket actually managed to make it to where I'm at. So I think it would be in a deep forest somewhere, maybe South America. Uh, I would give it a geotag so that it would know exactly where to go. I'm sure that's the, how it would work anyway. And find a location where there would be some challenges for that basket to get to where we were. So that once it did arrive, not only would there be the fanfare of the successful landing of our food, but we would be in a place that people would just not even contemplate having that ability to have some food delivered to them. So to answer your question, I think deep in the Amazon jungle would probably be my challenging location to see if a pizza could be delivered. Mr. Table Topics Master. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Awesome. Okay, the last one, and only because Pamela's got to be the timer, I'm going to bring this one to Dawn, Madam President. Madam President, there are three, there are many innovations in drone technology. One example is thermographic imaging. Sell me on the technology innovation you just invented, so I'll purchase your drone rather than the competitors. Madam President? Oh, do I have an innovation for you? Mr. Table Topic Master, I have a little experience with drone and drone technology, only in that we recently had celebrated Christmas and my son received a drone for Christmas, which was completely lost within the first 10 minutes of us using it, <laughs> or him using it. So the technology that I would use for Drone, this drone technology would be a combined endless battery life because if you use drones, you know that a battery, the battery life is actually a big problem. So it would have endless battery life, but the real leading edge technology that I would suggest would be automatic retrieval where it could dematerialize and materialize in your hand within a blink of your eye. That you don't have to climb up trees or throw balls in the tree to try to get the drone out. There, you could actually just push the little button on the remote control where it dematerializes and materializes wherever you want it to be. 
So that would be my new innovative technology advance for drone usage. Thank you for the question, Mr. Table Topic Master. Uh, thank you. I'm buying that one. <laughs> that's, I know that a big problem that is. Well, that's our table topics for today. So I will return the meeting back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. And our timer, can we have yes. a timer's report? Doug was 1 minute 53, Jim 1 minute 40, and Don 1 minute 10. Everybody qualified. Awesome. And thank you so much. And if I am going to hand the meeting over to our general evaluator so she can lead the evaluation portion of our meeting with that Pamela Landers. Can you help? Thank us? you. And Marty, would you be willing to mute yourself? I'm not only going to do that, I'm going to hide myself because I have to get back to my car and get to a meeting. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The purpose of the general evaluation is to introduce the evaluators, to evaluate the evaluators, to evaluate the meeting, and provide feedback on how we can improve and what we've done well. So first I'm going to introduce the evaluators. Our first evaluator for our first speaker, Jim Adams, is Don Nocera. Don, you are up. You're muted. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate your leading edge evaluation and, or your leading edge speech and giving us something to think about, not just giving us a speech that is about Toastmasters, which a lot of us Toastmasters like to do, enjoy doing. I appreciate that you delivered this speech with some tools and some, I thought, very innovative ways of evaluating a meeting so a meeting can be better. I liked the delivery. I liked your pace. I liked the, I actually took screenshots. So I, I was involved <laughs> in, your, in your speech. I also enjoyed just your structure, how easy it was for you to go from, this is where we were. These are the obstacles that we have uh, faced and what we continue to face. And then these are some solutions. I like that pace. I thought your, your delivery and your organization was excellent. And as far as being in the, the online presentation, you handled the whole screen sharing very well. I like the way you shared the screen, came back to yourself. You didn't stay on the presentation that you knew enough to re-engage us by getting back to back to the audience by moving the screen off and coming back. I particularly liked that I felt, I kind of felt hopeful. I kind of felt hopeful for online meetings and meetings being given in different spaces. And you gave me something to think about as far as my own speak speaking and for I think the other audience members too, maybe some different suggestions on how to do meetings effectively when you're not paying for the space. <laughs> so you gave us as the audience that's here something to connect to you and your purpose on starting this new group that you're starting. I was a tiny bit confused at the beginning because you said your first meeting was in 2018. So I wasn't quite sure whether or not you were doing a fictitious, I, this is something I'm thinking about doing in the future and I'm doing a kind of a backwards view of it or whether or not you actually have had these meetings. So that was a huge confusion for me. Other than that, I think you did a, a great job. I felt inspired. I felt that you created impact and you did a very good job of handling some topics of that may or may not have resonated with everyone. Killer technologies. And you just presented that as in it's a natural thing. So I appreciated that. And at this point, back to you, Madam General Evaluator. 
Thank you, Dawn. Okay, now we're going to have Doug evaluate Mark. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Um, Mark was doing an interesting challenge here in that it was two speeches consecutively. Now, I think he did a great job and he certainly pulled, managed the time very well to pull them off consecutively, both within the time frame. So I think that was very well done. I think that Mark has a good, clear voice that came through on this meeting. I had no problems. And I mean, the first speech he was talking about a valuable resource, which was his coach, Julie. And I think he structured it quite nicely. He clearly opened it with regard to Julie as a Pathways coach and, you know, gave some great detail throughout of how she'd helped him and what she'd helped him, um, you know, how Pathways has also helped him accomplish. So I think that was uh, nicely done. The second speech with regard to getting results was reporting on a book called uh, GTD, Getting Things Done. And I could see in Mark's facial features, his passion for this particular subject that really came through well. Um, in this video environment, body language and eye contact, I think is a lot more difficult to assess here, but that was definitely something that came through well. I kind of liked also as he was talking about the different leadership styles that he drew examples from our group here, you know, referring to our own names as potential leadership styles. I think that was uh, nicely done as well. I'm going to give a couple of challenges for improvement. Um, one with regard to the book, particularly in a four minute speech, I thought that going through the six types of leadership was too much. Really for each type, there was about two sentences worth. And particularly, I found it very difficult to find a difference between the first two, the coercive and the authoritative leadership. They seemed very similar to me. So, um, you know, I think it, I'd be very interested to find out more about this. And potentially what I could suggest is saying, yes, there are six types and I'm going to give you details on two. And you know, you'll for the others, you'll need to refer to the book. And that would, I think, help drive people to actually reading this book, which uh, was going on my list. The other quick challenge I'd like uh, to mention is with regard to being on a video chat here, um, your, what I see is a very close up of your face and just barely the top of your shoulder. As with a number of times where I think you were doing gestures, but your fingertips were just barely or touching the screen and gone. So I think probably what you might opt to do is pull back from the camera a little further and just give a little bit more body space. You'd have to lower the camera to do that, but um, give a little bit more space to see a bit more of the gestures or body language that are possible. Uh, overall, though, I think both of the speeches were very well done thank you uh, back to you madam general evaluator thank you very much doug thank you both of the evaluators qualified both a little tiny bit over three minutes one three eleven and the other one three fourteen well done that you stayed within the extra time extra 30 seconds that you had thank you very much and don i'd like to call for a grammarian report at this time Muted. There we go. Yes, I am muted. And so as far as the speech, the speeches went, I only really heard appreciation from one person many, 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 many times, which was Jim. And he used appreciation or some form of appreciation uh, five times within the first couple minutes, a couple seconds of his speech. And I know, Pamela, you use, it, you use that word often, but I didn't hear it today. So... Back to you, Mrs. Madam General Evaluator. And I am, I'm just gonna say, I am sure I use the most ums and ahs. So <laughs> to give myself a break, that's why I do this. I volunteered for this. <laughs> I don't have to count myself. Back to you, Mrs. General Evaluator. Very interesting theory about how to take care of that, not having to face the ahs and ums. 
Thank you. Okay, I'm going to evaluate the evaluators right now. Dawn first. You did a good job of talking about the delivery of the speech, which is the purpose of evaluations, not to mention the content unless there's something relevant in the content that is in the evaluation form. So you did a great job of talking about the delivery and using the method of what you did well, what you could improve, and wrapping up with what you did well. The improvement, I would just like to suggest that you talked about confusion, that you were confused about what he said. I'd like to suggest that you also see if there's some other thing about the delivery process, because that was a content piece, and that's okay, because it was confusing to have that in the beginning. But something about the delivery, especially in this online world that we're all exploring, that could be improved if there were anything that you just could, just to look for that, just to start paying attention to the details. You didn't do it wrong. It's something to recommend because we're all learning about this online world. Let's see if there's any suggestion that you could come up with for that in the future, but you did well. You really did well. And Doug, you did a great job of evaluating Mark, his speech, you did a great job of the suggestions of improvement. I agreed with you. I had the same frustration about the little finger things kind of showing up. And knowing that you were doing something like this, but I didn't see that whole thing. So I appreciated you sharing that feedback. It was very specific and tangible. And again, commenting on the delivery. Thank you very much. And a little bit about the content that was related to the delivery process. So you both did really well. Evaluations are such an important piece of us learning about who we are and how we come across and how we present ourselves. Back to you, Madam President and Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. I, we, ha we have like six more minutes left of our meeting and I would like to open, just maybe do a two minute timer and offer our speeches, our speakers, and our evaluators sort of like a round robin. Uh, we're, I'm, this is ex we're experimenting, right? A little round robin. Is there anything else that you have to say to the speakers or the evaluators? And I'm what I'm going to do, Pamela, if you'd like to lead this since you are the general evaluator, you okay. can. I think that would be appropriate. All right. And I also realized I forgot to evaluate the meeting. There's one thing I did want to say about the meeting process. I was really impressed about how everybody came across on camera. Considering all the challenges around voice and uh, light, that everybody is well lit, which is not always the case. I'm just really happy to see that. And I like the table topics. I could, by the way, Martin, I could have asked somebody else to do the timing or timed myself and participated just as an option. I'm a woman. I can multitask. My brain is designed to multitask. So that's an option. <laughs> okay. Who feels like they would like to provide feedback to one of the speakers? Raise your hand if you want to say something or unmute yourself. Well, I could provide some feedback, just positive, more positive feedback to Mark um, about your delivery and your passion. I, I really could feel how passionate you are about leadership and I appreciate the, the transference of your energy and to kind of catch that spirit. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. And Again, you know, I would love, I'd love to see more of you. I would love to see more of you. And who else do I want? Doc, you did a great job. I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad that you showed up and you, your evaluation was very professional and I enjoyed, I feel like I learned something from you too. So I, that, those are my two bits of feedback. Anybody else? I just want to say, Doug, I, for some reason it really resonated with me, your evaluation of the online 
aspect of the evaluation portion. I almost feel like it needs to be a, a dedicated section in our evaluation agenda, not to, to, to take away from the evaluation portion of the individuals. It, it might be something that we want to just talk about under the general evaluation portion in a little bit more detail. But what you mentioned and brought up was so important, and that's, that's why I thought that your comments about the fingers and the position and the lighting that Pamela mentioned was so important to me. Thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, I really haven't done these online meetings, so I was just uh, giving some of my thoughts for you know the experience. I wanted to say also that I really enjoyed this meeting. I thought that it was structured well, and you know this sort of uh, online Toastmaster meeting I think uh, has been working quite nicely. So I'm I'm pleased uh, pleased to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Marty. So, yes. So Pam, I, I really didn't want to leave you out. I was hoping to do four table topics. So <laughs> since we have a minute left, I'll ask you a question. <laughs> what, what's the most unusual item you can imagine being delivered to your door by an Amazon drone? An Amazon drone? Yes. Wow. Probably an air balloon. <laughs> like, you know, one of those things you'd go up in the sky and you'd get to, I live in the desert, so we could go over and see the entire desert, but having that delivered to my door, that would be pretty amazing. That would be pretty amazing to have a drone delivered to my cool. door, to have a drone deliver an air balloon to my door. Awesome, <laughs> okay, thank you. Mark. I just wanna thank you very much. This is my second consecutive visit and I noticed that John put a link for connection. I find that it fits in my schedule. It's a bit snug, but I look forward to returning and I commit myself to being with you next Wednesday. Thank you. Yay. So Don, do you want to look at the schedule for next week? Oh, I do. Thank you. And at this time, I'm going to just say our meeting is adjourned for time. And please stay on while we look at the schedule for next week. So thank you very much. And I'm going to stop recording and we'll go straight into the agenda portion of the meeting. Thank